In this video, we're going to start discussing how to calculate the margin of error. Uh, we're going to focus on this video on proportions. So we're going to have to both look at how to calculate the margin of error for proportions and for a population mean, for population proportion and population mean. Uh, but in this video, we're just going to focus on a population proportion. So a proportion would be something like what percentage of the country, uh, what percentage of Americans think that the country is on the right track, uh, what percentage of Americans approve of the job that the president is doing, what percentage of Americans uh, approve of the job uh, that, the, that Congress is doing, uh, what percentage of North Carolinians approve of the job that the governor is doing. All of these would be proportion questions. The uh, outcome would be a percentage uh, versus uh, a question about mean, what is the average height of uh, American uh, male adults? Or uh, what is the average foot size of uh, five-year-olds? Those would be questions of uh, mean. So we're going to focus first on proportion. Pro uh, proportion is a little bit easier to calculate than a mean. Uh, and I have an example here to get us rolling. So let's read that now. A researcher study studying the effects of income levels on breastfeeding of infants hypothesizes that countries where the income level is lower have a higher rate of infant breastfeeding than higher income uh, countries. It is known that Germany, uh, considered a high-income country by the World Bank, 22% uh, of all babies are breastfed. In Turkestan, considered a low-income country by World Bank, researchers found that in a random sample, and here's where we're going to get to the meat and potatoes, uh, of 500 new mothers, that 100 and 25 uh, were breastfeeding their infants. Uh, the question asks, for a 90% confidence interval of a proportion of mothers in low-income countries who breastfeed their infants. So, some new terms for us to discuss. Let's see if I can get my cursor to work here. All right. The first one is going to be uh, X, the number of successes in our study. So a success would be breastfeeding your baby and 125 people uh, breastfed, 125 mothers breastfed. N is our sample size. That's going to be 500. That's important. And then sometimes it's labeled as X hat. Uh, other times you see it with an apostrophe. This is our sample proportion. The number of successes in our sample, or the proportion of successes in our sample. And I have my calculator here. So let's just plug and chug that quickly. 125 divided by 500. You get of course, 25 percent. All right. So our formula now for margin of error. Here it is. I'm going to put it over here on this side. Uh, right now we're abbreviating it uh, EBP. Sometimes it's abbreviated simply to E. Uh, you sometimes also see it abbreviated to uh, MOE for margin of error. Uh, so pointing out what we're talking about here, the first thing you see here this first component is called the critical 
value. Uh, the critical value is where your confidence interval really comes into play. Uh, I didn't put that down here. Our confidence level is going to be 90% and our alpha is going to be 10% or 0.1. So that's going to come into play here with our critical value. So this says Z subscript alpha over 2. So our alpha in this case is 0.1. This is going to be the Z score for alpha over 2. Or what's actually uh, going to be 5%. So let's talk about that just for a second. If you think about a normal distribution, here we go. If you think about a normal distribution, uh, a 90% confidence interval, that means we are expecting the parameter to fall within this 90%, the shaded region. That means that 10% will fall outside the center, or 5% will fall below and 5% will fall above. We are looking for the Z score that would go here well or here. Okay. Uh, so let's pull out our calculator again. Go to stats, excuse me, go to distro, go to inverse norm. We want 5% for something that is normally distributed. And so let's say we're working with 1.64. <clears throat> as our critical value here. Um, I've cat we know n, I know uh, p prime or p hat. I also need to know Q hat, the complement of our sample proportion. So that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.25, 0 0.75. All right. So we are ready to use our formula here to calculate our margin of error. So the critical value we're using is 1.64 times the square root of 0 0.025 times point, point zero. 0 0.025 times 0 0.75 divided by n, which is 500. Close the parentheses. And there we go. About 3%. So this is one way to discuss, uh, one way to calculate margin of error. Uh, students tend to find this a little uh, technical. I do want you to feel comfortable doing it this way. Uh, but let's look at another way of doing this. You can go to stat, you can go over to test, and then scroll down to one prop z int. All right, so this is working for one, working with one proportion. X would be the number of successes in our sample. In this case, it's 125. 
n is your sample size. In this case, it's 500. Uh, confidence level, in this case, it's 90%, so we're going to put 0.9. And then we can have it calculate, and it's giving it to us in an interval already. It tells us p hat, p prime. So let's. Uh, Put this to the side for one second. So we got a second ago. Let's compare our answer calculating it by hand with our answer calculating it in the calculator. We got an answer of 3.17% or 0 0.0317. Uh, so to calculate the confidence interval now, uh, we're going to go above and below. So when you go um, above and below, this is what you get for your um, bounds. To write this in interval notation now, this would be my lower bound, this would be my upper bound. If you want to compare this to what we got in the calculator, uh, there is a little bit of difference, but it looks pretty good to me. So uh, the calculator probably rounded the critical value uh, differently than we did. Um, but you can tell uh, they're pretty similar. So that is how you would go about uh, calculating the margin of error and confidence interval for uh, a proportion. Uh, so takeaway here. This is called a critical value. Uh, here it's a z-score. Uh, we've introduced the terminology of x, the number of successes, n, your sample size, p prime or p hat is your sample proportion. So what the poll is calculate what, what the poll projects. Confidence level talked about in the last video. Alpha talked about in the last video. Critical value, that first component of the formula. Here it's a z score. Uh, Q prime is the complement to p, talked about q before. And then e is your margin of error. Uh, it can be abbreviated to MOE or a couple other ways as well. One last thing to talk about with this question, uh, referring back to the researcher's hypothesis. Uh, on whether uh, low income or lower income level countries would have a higher rate of breastfeeding. Remember, Germany, which was considered a higher income country, uh, had a breastfeeding rate of 22%. And here we can see with Kazakhstan, uh, the, percentage, the, the percentage of uh, new mothers that are breastfeeding falls between just below 22% uh, to possibly as high as 28%. So with this data, we would not be able to conclude that uh, lower income countries would have uh, a higher rate of breastfeeding since it's possible for both Kazakhstan and Germany to have um, a rate, breastfeeding rate of 22%.